Sean Fridays. I'm Al McCauley and once again we are on location. We're in Emmitsburg, Maryland and we are at the National Shrine Grotto of Our Lady of Lourdes on the campus of Mount St. Mary's University. This is an absolutely beautiful place to come and to get your spiritual geek on. There's all kinds of prayerful opportunities here. It's a wonderful place that really started with St. Elizabeth Ann Seton and we're going to talk about her a little bit more as we go on. We're at the spot where St. Elizabeth Ann Seton started her religious order, the Sisters of Charity. Again, we're in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and you can see behind me the reason she chose this spot. It's absolutely stunning in any season of the year. The views, the vistas are remarkable. And she is going to stay here for a period of time, and then she's gonna move a little bit, about two miles away from this spot, land that was given to her, and that's where her order is going to flourish. We're at the National Shrine Grotto of Our Lady of Lourdes in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and it's an absolutely beautiful place. It's a spiritual retreat, and I'm gonna take you through and show you some of the highlights. As you enter these beautiful grounds, this wonderfully spiritual place, what better statue to look at than Jesus with his arms open to embrace all, as if to say, in, like in Matthew's Gospel, come to me, those of you who are burdened and labored, and I will give you rest. The welcoming nature of Jesus is an apt beginning of this because it's such a welcoming place a beautiful likeness of St. Mother Teresa holding a newborn baby. Mother Teresa was a champion for all people, the rights, the life of all people, the dignity of all, especially the unborn. Just a beautiful, beautiful rendering. I've made the trip to these grounds many times with my good friend Pete Yeager, who happens to be filming this right now. And this is his absolute favorite statue in the whole place. This is a depiction, of course, of the nativity. You see Mary laying perfectly prone here. This is nothing like any depiction of the nativity we've seen before. We usually see her very clean and tidy and neat as if she never gave birth. And here you see a woman who looks exhausted and looks tired. She shares in our humanity uh, of a woman who just gave birth. You can see Jesus, baby Jesus looking at her lovingly. And what I also love about this particular statue is that Joseph is keeping guard. The idea of Joseph as the husband and the caretaker of the Holy Family. Uh, what a wonderful image of all three of them. We're at one of my favorite statues in this whole place, this wonderful place, St. Francis of Assisi, 13th century wonderful saint, and he happens to be my patron saint because my middle name is Francis. Please don't laugh. The highlight of the grounds here, of course, is going to be the grotto, the replica of the grotto of Our Lady of Lourdes when she appeared to Bernadette in 1858 in France. What you see behind me is a statuette depiction of Our Lady of Fatima. This is a very well-known apparition of Mary to three young children in Fatima, Portugal in 1917. She appeared to these visionaries six times from May to October on the 13th of each of those months with special messages for prayer, for peace and reconciliation in our world. There are many wonderful mosaic depictions of saints and the life of Jesus and Mary throughout the grounds here. This is one of my favorites. This is Our Lady of Perpetual Help. And this particular devotion means a lot to me because my mom and dad were married in 1959 at a church called Our Lady of Perpetual Help in Sublet, Illinois. But aside from that, I love the symbolism of this particular image. In particular, I want to point out just one, and that would be the shoes that are on Jesus' feet. If you look, you'll notice that one is off, one sandal is off, and one is on. And people would think, well, maybe he was afraid of something and he ran to Mary and he ran so fast that he ran out of his shoes. And that's a great story. But the real symbolism is that one shoe is off to depict that Jesus is not of this earth. He's not bound to the earth. He is divine. And the other shoe is on because it does touch the earth and it is part of his humanity. So what that tells us theologically is Jesus has two natures. He is both human and divine. We're at another statue of a great saint here at the Grotto. In this case, it's John Paul II, one of the longest reigning popes in Catholic Church history and one of the greatest. He is, of course, instrumental in helping to end communism in Eastern Europe, and he was a strong advocate and a proponent for a life in all its various phases, particularly the unborn. There are a lot of statues at this grotto, and we can't show them all to you, but i got to stop at this one. This is St. Teresa of Lisieux. She was a Carmelite nun who died at the age of 24 in 1897. She's absolutely one of my favorites. Of all the saints that are out there, I love her the most. And I guarantee you, if you watch Fish on Fridays in the future, especially around October 1st, which is her feast day, I will have a whole episode devoted to her. I wear her likeness on a medal around my neck every day of my life. She's so profound to me. 
Um, her life was such a great example. Uh, what a wonderful, terrific saint. St. Pius X called her the greatest saint of modern times. Among other things you can do here is walk the Stations of the Cross. The 14 stations are beautifully depicted in these bronze reliefs. We're at Station 5, which is Simon of Cyrene helps to carry the cross of Jesus. What a great reminder that we're all in this together to help each other, to carry each other's burdens. That's what true Christian service is all about. So I'm not going to walk through all 14 stations while we're here, but I did want to stop here at Station number 6 because this is Veronica Wipes the Face of Jesus. And this particular station means a lot to me because my mother's middle name was Veronica. So Veronica, St. Veronica was her patron saint. And I can't help but think of the, the model that she was uh, for, for my mom. And my mom, how many times she both literally and figuratively wiped my face, you know, washed my face and, and that of her husband, my dad, and, and uh, my five siblings. Um, she lived that call that, Ma, that Veronica felt to wipe the face of our Lord. And my mom did that with all of us. Aside from the 14 stations of the cross, here at the grotto, there are depictions of the 20 different mysteries of the rosary. There's the joyful, the sorrowful, the glorious, and what you see behind me. These are the five luminous mysteries. In particular, this one is the second luminous mystery, and that's the classic story of Jesus changing the water into wine at the wedding of Cana, his first miracle. And it's a great story in John chapter two, because you all know the story. Mary goes to Jesus and says, you know, they're out of wine. And he says, what is this concern of mine? Why, why are you telling me this? And Mary turns away from him and says to the head waiter, do whatever he tells you. What's fascinating about that particular story is these are the last words that Mary speaks in all of scripture. Do whatever he tells you. It's as if she's saying that to us down to the ages, that we should listen to her son, to listen to Jesus. It also is a great story because Jesus did what his mother asked. And so we feel confident going to Mary with our prayers and our petitions, knowing that Jesus will listen to them and, and answer them according to his holy will. Like the actual site at Lourdes, where Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette in 1858, there was a spring that came forth that had healing properties. And this is replicated here at this grotto. So people can come and sign themselves and remind themselves of their baptism and that we're all called to be God's children. Behind me is a replica of the grotto that was where Bernadette had the vision of Mary in 1858, Our Lady of Lourdes. And it's depicted beautifully with the statues that you see. Now what you might not be aware of is they did not have blue pop-up tents like that back in the 19th century. Clearly those are there for the priests when they have mass here, which often is celebrated here um, as are many prayer services. It's amazing to watch people come here and to be spiritually moved and really reconnect with their Lord. In the grotto here at Emmitsburg is this particular stone, which was taken from the actual grotto at Lourdes in France, where Our Lady appeared to Bernadette in 1858. You'll often be moved by people who come up and will touch this stone and pray for the intercession of Mary to our Lord. At the very end of the grounds here, there's a wonderful, quiet place. If you walk up this path and up the stairs, you see the depiction of Jesus crucified on the cross with his mother, Mary Magdalene, and the disciple whom he loved, John. It's a wonderful place of quiet, reflective prayer, a time to be alone with your thoughts. And it's a time to re remember that this is the good news, that Jesus didn't stay on the cross, he didn't stay dead, he rose. And we live in that faith and we live in that reality as Christians every day.